good afternoon friends so I'm gonna work on my crawler camera project um, if you like this video please remember to subscribe to the channel and to hit the like button also check out the playlist because that's how I organize the different videos on different topics so without further ado let's get started and this is gonna be a long format video so if you don't like those this video may not be for you as always, check out the description for links to the items that I use in the videos, where you can find them conveniently on Amazon. All right, so I think that's about right. And I've been working off of the instructions. So I've got some key drivers or screwdrivers and the kit included some Loctite and some grease. So just push that off the way. I built the rear axle. This is a really nicely designed um, axle setup. It's pretty pretty high quality. Uh, that's my front steerable axle. I'm probably gonna add a rear steerable axle at some point but that's not today. Here are the um, shocks. I don't really like the way these are assembled. I think this is a crappy design and it's, it was really hard to put them together. Um, but do check out that video because there are some ideas on how to do that. Um, Alright, so I'm going to find D1. And so far what I need a knife for is to get these bags open. So these are drive shafts and our supports. I think that's what it is. Eek. Super eek. I'm not 100% sure how I want to handle these yet, so I'm just going to set that off to the side. <sighs> Every one of these gets one of these, and of course, this is the... These are difficult to get in. Oh, this may not be as bad as the other ones. But I don't like this design. I really wish they had spent more money on these. These are just hard to get started. Let alone to get them on straight. Yeah, so, I mean, this to me is a shitty design because it's really hard to get started. I'm going to try and open this up a little bit and see what else I've got. What I'm trying to do is just ream the entrance a little bit, which makes it easier to um, get this started. And see, that, that worked just fine. And then I can wrap my hands by twisting all this. So the easiest way to twist these is with a little help from a screwdriver. Because it's too, it's too hard to hold it. I might be able to hold it there. Or not. Let's see, here's a real skinny one. Yeah, that works. So, figures it'll come out, but not go back in. Just be careful with that one. 
So where were we before we fell apart? So I'm using this because this is a lot easier way to hold these still. And then that lets me get this on here pretty much all the way. So again, my trick for this is I just ream these out a little bit. And that gives a lip that you can get the threads into to get it started. If it doesn't work the first time, just hit it again. You're just trying to scrape a little bit of material so that the teeth has somewhere to bite. If these were threaded, if they were a little higher quality, this wouldn't be an issue. These are ball ends. I should probably figure out if this, yeah, it actually does not. So one of them is straight and one of them isn't. Oh, and they're reverse threaded. All right, so that is a steering linkage. And another steering linkage. So there are different pieces here. So just be aware that some of these thread on one way and some of them thread on another way. Not really a big deal, just be aware that these are tie rod ends, so they're designed to be lengthened without removal, and that's why they work this way. So there's one. Now let's figure out what we got. Okay, that's longer, so we don't know what that's really for. And then these are short, so these just get straight. you know it, I put the wrong one together. So I've got to take these off and thread them onto a different one. Although there should be two of these, so this one would be identical. Doesn't look it. That sure is, isn't it? So I am checking the lengths, and none of these seem to be an exact match. Those certainly aren't. So that's our 55, and then 126, yeah, that is not. That is 126. Hmm. We're measuring... Yeah, that's definitely 126 right there. So the 55, so we'll start here because we know what this is. So we've got a whole bunch of these different ends, and you've got to kind of sort through them to find the two that are cockeyed.
Alright. And then I'm going to do this one differently because it's angled. I don't want to twist the end until it's well in there, and then it won't matter. But if I started twisting it right away, it probably would have screwed the threads up. Okay, so that one's good. And then we'll just verify that this one does not play nice. There it goes. Alright, so that's put together. I'm going to put it off to the side. I'm going to stick that one off to the side and hope that was right. Now we're going to do this 55 millimeter, and I really wish there would be quantities next to this so I'd just know for sure what I was dealing with. So I'm going to come down here and just measure that. That's 55.5. That's pretty darn close to 55 millimeters. And those look like they are straight, so we're going to go ahead and find two straight ones. This is, again, this is the easiest way. I'm using a one and a half millimeter wrench, and just any anything that's this size will work. All right, so that one's in. And remember, these are are um, reversed so that they shorten and lengthen when you twist it while it's assembled. And that's one slightly off, but it'll be okay. It should fix itself. So I'm going to adjust the thermostat from my phone. Okay, and then we're going to stop and just kind of see what the instructions have to say. So, so this is these are just about the front steering links. That's all this is. That's 126, and that's our 55. So we need these two, and then we need to go ahead and open this bag and insert the little. They really could have broken this down into smaller subsets, um, and it would have made this a little less confusing if the bags matched the steps. Um, probably would have increased their costs a little bit, but I can't imagine that the plastic bags are that expensive. So, nothing magical here. Again, the easiest way to do this is to grab this. All right, well, second easiest way. So if you can't slide them across, the other thing you can do is offset and pinch.
There are pliers that are special for this, but I don't have them, so we're doing this the hard way. Apparently the really hard way. There we go. So again, you just pinch this like this, and then it'll pop, and once it pops, it's in place. So there we go. Now we can move all these over to the side. So we turn the page and see the next set of instructions. All right, so now we need our steerable front cylinder, or, or not cylinder, our steerable front axle. And So I'm going to take to measuring these because this is kind of I think that's right. Those are the only two of those. So yep. Yeah. Okay. And what I'm trying to do is just eliminate pieces and parts. So I'm going to use this advantage to just install these and get them out of my way. Alright, so I've gone ahead and brought the 2mm wrench in because we're probably far from done with it. And uh, probably the next time I've tightened these I'm going to put Loctite on them. Or Threadlocker as it's officially known because it's not Henkel's Loctite brand. So that just gets three things out of my way. Now we get to figure out how this actually works. First I'm going to clean my glasses because it will make it easier to see all this little stuff. So we want the long one first. And these go in with AX120s, which are 3 by 25 millimeters. That looks like that. And that. And they are the 2 millimeter wrench. So we'll go ahead and up through here. Oh, you're telling me, really? Really? Oh, that's just not right. 1, 2, 3, 5, 1, 0, 9. So that's actually a 14 millimeter. You'll see what I'm whining about here in a second. Alright, so that's a short one. So, this sucks. They've got to be threaded the whole way. You'd think that they'd have made this larger on one side. 
because it only needs to be a slip fit on one, one side. Nope, nope, they've made this the hard way. So again, we've got to open this up because you can't get, it's really hard to start a thread. And it doesn't matter, two and a half is probably what we want. So we just want to ream the, the thread so that we can get this thing in here because it, it was not going to go in without a lip. And that's unfortunately just a fit and finish thing. If they had cast a little lip into this, it would not be, it, it wouldn't have to ream one in there. Okay, so it looks like this reaches in. kidding me nope these are facing backwards so I've got to flip them around So I'm going to leave that as an assembly, and there's a reason for that. And then we'll just put this back together. And yeah, this is hurting my hands again. The screw, um, putting the screws in requires too much force for my hands and it causes them to hurt. So I don't know how long I'll work on this. Um, I mean, I'll probably finish this D2, but then I may stop. I just hate stopping with a parts bag open.
All right, so. We're still good there, and now we've got to drive this screw all the way up, which will take a while. And that just would it. There's there's not a whole lot of reason. I guess it secures it better, but it's just not. You know, these self-cutting threads in nylon are, um, it's just, it's just a lot of threading. Uh, if I wasn't so afraid of uh, stripping things out, I think I would go get a power tool to do this. So that's one. Now the other side is a little bit more complicated because it is what will reach out to the yeah. And so what we're trying to what this does is it steps around the pumpkin. So we need a long screw. We'll go ahead and set it in the screwdriver. And then we need the steering link or pitman arm in this particular case. And the pitman arm goes to the servo, which would be the steering gear box. This is better because you can set the camber by just adjusting this as opposed to, you know. set right hmm. that makes me wonder if that one's in backwards it might be So, So that's good. But this one is probably an upside down. Yeah, it is. So that's probably why it was a pain in the ass to install. So we'll take this out and flip it around.
All right, so that is that. And both wheels point basically in the same direction. So that's done and that's done. And now we're gonna work on the back side. So let's get the orientation right. It wants the servo installed, so let me find that. All right, so this is an Amazon special. It is an inexpensive um, uh, 25 kilogram servo, so we'll see how this works. And it wants this over here. So that's kind of interesting. Yeah, that looks like it's right, so we'll just figure out where the little mounting pieces are. Oh, it even came with a really nice metal arm. We might actually use that over the hybrid plastic one that came with the kit. But first, we have to find all the little pieces. So we don't need these, so we're going to set these somewhere else. But we do need these, and they should go together like this. So you put that in there, and that just keeps the screw from smashing the rubber grommet. And the rubber grommet provides some shock isolation. Okay, and then these are this regular screw. All right, that'll work. So Capra provides their own screws, so these screws are not going to be useful. So we will send them to recycling. They don't look very high quality to begin with. And then we need AX109s, which are these little guys that have a flat head. So let's find them. There's two, three, and four. All right, and then let's figure out what drives these. All right, that looks good. So then we will and we are having some issues here. So unfortunately, these are not going to play well. Let me just double check I'm not putting this together wrong. No. So that's not going to happen. So what we're going to wind up doing is a little bit of a hybrid here. These are going to get recycled. As always, there's more than one way to skin a cat. So that would technically work, but what we're going to do is insert these. So that's the other thing you can do is pop these in. Let's make 
sure we can just get that through there. Yep, that'll work. So if you squeeze these, they will slide into these little holes. Now I'm not going to send. I'm not going to finish that one. I'm going to actually get all four started. screws making sure I don't have anything backwards here. So that looks pretty good there. So next we need to attach the server on. And I'm actually 
this little aluminum one is actually nicer than what came in the kit. So we know it works, so we're going to use it. And this is definitely somewhere that Loctite is your friend. So, the way I'm going to put the Loctite is, I'm just going to dribble it into the hole. And then this is a screw instead of an Allen key, which is a little irritating, but, you know, that is cheaper. And this is a value-priced servo. Alright, so that'll hold that still. We'll deal with that in a minute. And then we've got some really tiny stuff on the side here. And we're going to attach this with Loctite as well. Because I don't expect this stuff to stay still. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just dribble some Loctite in there. And this is one and a half millimeter. And then there's one on the back side underneath here. And I'll try and get this where you guys can see it, but I'm not making any promises. So. a little bit down there. And then I'm going to come in here like this. All right. And that should dry and help keep this thing secured so it doesn't come apart while it's under a house somewhere because that is what this is for. And then I'm going to check my clearances and you can see that I've got clearance there. Just barely, but it clears and that's what matters. So now we got to bring this back and this needs to be turned so we'll just do that. more and then it calls for an AX116 which is a 3 by 12 millimeter looks like that and then let's see So it is going to fit. That's a nice thing. And again, like I did with the previous one, I'm going to dribble some Loctite in here. And I need to find the original piece that came with us so I can figure out which of these that I need to use. There it is. So they were using the upper piece. So we'll use the upper one as well. good to know if I want more throw I can use the other part of this So, now at this point, we're looking pretty good. Alright, so 
now we've got some stuff going on on the back side and we need to set that off to the side. So we, now we need to find ninety and a half millimeters and some bent pieces. So we need four of these. bet these are 90 and a half millimeters, but we're going to measure it and see. Ninety-one point nine. It's really close, so we'll we'll run with these, and we'll need this. Started, we will switch to doing it with this. So this one's a little crooked. Um, it should fix itself as it works its way in. Okay, so we've got that one together. my hands for a second. Pull in two of these. And the screws we're going to need are those. So, these go together like this.
Okay, so once that's there, we can come back in. And it is a two millimeter screw. Okay, so then that side's attached. We'll do the other side. First you want to slide this in and then come across. Alright, and then this does go that way. So it's locked in, and then we're just going to come in here with the two millimeter driver. Nope, that's not it. Okay, so that's that step done. Side. All right. So now we have some 69 millimeter pieces, and I think that's what these are. Sixty-eight point nine. It's the first on-spec piece that I've seen. The others were just slightly over, which tells you the tolerances are actually pretty loose on these. So these call for straight pieces. So I'm going to find four of the straight pieces. Three, four. Okay. And then we'll need this piece to help hold these. And then same as before, we'll just put all four of these on. There we go. Rest my hands for a second.
So these do need to go towards, there's a little notch on one side, so I've got this one in backwards, so I'm going to go and fix that. And then let's see what size screws are involved for these. Okay, so two, three, five, one, oh, nines, which are these. And then those are going to go in here like this. Again, the little this piece it matters but they need the little pieces put in so we'll stop and do that real quick So that's good. And then I'm going to spin this one around, make it a little easier to work on. is all assembled and then all four of these are supposed to mate up I'm guessing I don't know I think it's just um, an appearance thing so um, I think it just looks like this because these clearly are never going to reach so but at the instructions were pretty good. Pretty good so now we're going to work on this. We need two of these, four of these, actually, eight of those. Go ahead and bring all these over. And then we've got some 90 millimeter pieces, which I'm pretty sure that's what this is.
90.8, so that looks like a match there. Unfortunately, these call for bent. That's weird. And then, um, I don't know what the shorter pieces are, but there's only two of them, so I bet these are 69 as well. Yep, close enough. And then let's look at what we got left over here. So we got one bent, two bent, three bent, four bent, and two straight. So the straights are going to go with those, and the bents need to go on this, so we'll go ahead and take this apart and replace them. It's coming right along. All right. A little break for my hands. place left for these so go ahead and put these together
Okay, so now we got to put all these little balls in. So, now this goes like this, and we need these to go in here, along with these, and a little closer, so... process. And I'm sorry, you guys probably can't see that through my hand, but put my hands where I need to be able to put them in order to do this. That one's in backwards, so we'll fix that in a minute. That's no big deal. We'll do that.
So these are wrong. They need to come together. So what we'll do is we'll just insert this. those where they need to be. Let's see what the next one looks like. I have a pretty good guess. So that's those two. And they go, hmm, surprise, they go up here. And then we need the last two screws that are left, which are there. So we will go ahead and put these together. And I'm going to just rotate this. So I guess the good news is I wind up with an intimate understanding of how this thing is put together. But this is an awful lot of time to put these together and I think if I could have bought some of this pre-assembled I would have. I just didn't want their ready to run kit because I don't want I have different ideas for the radio. Alright, so that is the end of the second axle, and uh, that's the end of this video. If you enjoyed this, please remember to like and subscribe. I will be um, uh, stopping here, and the transmission is the next thing, and I'm not going to mess with that for right now. So thanks for watching. Uh, remember again, I check out the playlist because there is... Um, not that small. Okay, so now we found the bit, we can start to actually put it together. Unfortunately, it needs to be tightened. Let me stop here. There is a whole list of these videos on this project.